Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another Woodbury video and part two of the 1994 F-150 restoration. We are starting the diagnosing process in the engine bay. We have a slightly rough idle and a couple other small little problems that I've been noticing here and there. And uh, so we're gonna try to figure out what the issue is. Everything that I do, I'm following from this Chilton manual for my specific vehicle. I'm gonna leave a link in the description below where you can find one of these yourself because I am no mechanic. Everything I'm doing today is literally coming out of this book, which is pretty cool. I love seeing vehicles having like an entire full dedicated manual that will literally take you all the way through rebuilding your engine. It's incredible. So I'll leave a link in the description below and we're gonna go ahead and get started diagnosing some of these issues. Before we get too far into this video, you might be asking yourself, why are we working on a truck? We work with wood and we build furniture. Well, this entire month is Fix It Feb, which means that we are participating in the challenge of fixing instead of throwing out and buying new. This challenge is in partnership with iFixit and they are leading the charge of the right to repair and to reduce e-waste. Fixing up this truck will give us a lot of knowledge about mechanical work and will broaden our skills into a new trade. Every week during February, iFixit is giving away one of these tech toolkits over on Instagram. So find a little something around your house and share it with the hashtag fixitbev to enter. I know we have a few things to do around the house and no, you do not need one of these kits to enter. All you need is you and a little something to repair. Okay, let's continue. So before we do anything, I'm gonna check the fluids, obviously, I guess. I'm gonna check the, the engine oil primarily. I do have an, an oil leak that I know of and it's coming from the oil pan, which is gonna be quite a nightmare to replace by the way uh, so we're going to check the oil first and just make sure that it's good before we continue with any of our other tests this truck has been sitting for a few days so there's a chance it's lost enough oil to uh matter well we're just barely good barely just barely <laughs> so anytime you have an engine problem it's wise to read the codes on this vehicle, pretty much anything prior to 1996, it has the OBD1 versus OBD2, so you're gonna get less information, and it's you you don't have like a big big scanner tool that you can use for it. So you actually just have to watch bleeps on the dash and then get code numbers and then read the code numbers. And the code numbers that I've been getting are all EGR related, which is basically like emissions, and it's from, it's this piece here, this piece here and some other stuff over here. And I've tested all of those things prior to starting the series and they're all fine. So the problem is elsewhere. The other thing that could be for a rough idle, which is basically, there's a million and one things that it could be, but it could be the throttle position sensor, which has been replaced and it could be the air control valve, which hasn't been replaced but has been tested. Could be the ignition module. It could be a vacuum leak. It could be, gosh, any number of things. It could be a lot of different stuff. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna check for vacuum leaks and we're just gonna go around and check a handful of things, but primarily a vacuum test. And also, before we get too far into this, I wanna check the compression of this engine, which is gonna tell us the health, the overall health of the engine, and will give us a good idea of what, what we're getting started with, because uh, I don't wanna to get too far into this and realize that, it, that it's a bigger issue. That's not gonna happen, but that's, uh, that's what we need to figure out. So first things first, let's do the compression test. I think that will eliminate a worst case scenario for us, and it'll be fun to uh, try out, because I haven't done that before, so. First thing we need to do is warm up the engine. The engine has to be up to operating temperature because all the seals and everything have to be good and warm and the, the uh, oil has to be good and warm for everything to be sealing properly. And all the compression test is, is it tells you how many PSI each cylinder is creating. And there is general rough numbers out there, but for this engine, we want to be somewhere in the 140s to 170s PSI per cylinder, but the main thing is, is we want them all to be consistent. It doesn't matter if they're low or good or high or whatever, we just want them to be consistent. So that's what we're looking for. So first thing we need to do is warm up the truck and then we'll get started with the compression test. This all sounds like mumbo jumbo to me. <laughs> I know, I'm, I'm, <laughs> it's all mumbo jumbo to me too, but I'm, 
I, I know I'm sounding like I know what I'm talking about, but I've just read the manual <laughs> and I've watched some YouTube videos. So you're just regurgitating. I'm just regurgitating <laughs> information here. So uh, if I can dumb it down to my level, <laughs> basically what we're going to do is we're going to see if the engine is good. <laughs> that's, that's what we're going to do. <laughs> the engine you hear it kind of going up and down a little bit but these older cars when you start them up a lot of times they rev high at first and then settle down but this one is still kind of going up and down you'll hear it in the background and that's the kind of issue I've actually taken this to a mechanic shop and they said absolutely nothing wrong with the truck but it wasn't doing this when we first got it and I can tell that there's a problem so we're trying to figure it out so how long does it have to run like this? Uh, at least until the temperature gauge gets into the normal range. Oh no, he's looking at my car now. <laughs> Who knows what he's going to find and want to fix. So we're up to operating temperature and we're going to go ahead and start the compression test. And the first thing we need to do for that is we need to remove all the spark plugs, which is much easier than you might think. All the spark plugs are located on the side of the engine. If you have a four cylinder engine, the engine is probably turned this way and they're probably all on top, but they're all down here. They're, you can usually just follow these wires. So you go to your distributor and down to your spark plugs. And that's what actually ignites the fuel in the engine. So they're on both sides. So I've, I have eight of them because I have a V8. So I'm gonna remove all eight, which and this car is relatively easy. We start by uh, pulling off these, which are the spark plug wires, and then we'll reach down in there and unscrew them. There you go, there's your spark plug. What's cool about this is called a spark plug socket. It actually has a little rubber grommet in there, so it grabs on to these little ridges, which is pretty cool. That's what kind of holds it in there. Now is a good time to inspect these as well. These look surprisingly new. Like maybe the prior owner changed them right before they sold it. So this is our compression tester and all it says is just a hose that screws into the same spot that the spark plug was in and then a gauge here with a relief but all it's going to do is measure our max compression and then hold that for us and the way that works without going into too much detail there's a million great videos about this we, we disconnect our ignition system so that we don't inject fuel into the engine while we're trying this and then we're just going to crank the engine over Nothing's going to happen, it's just going to hear the engine crank, and as it cranks, it's going to basically increase in compression and tell us our actual compression reading. And what we're going to do is we're going to write down each cylinder's compression and then compare them at the end. So we're going to do them individually, and when you crank it, you typically want to hold it for, I've heard anywhere between five to seven cranking cycles. So you'll hear like crank, 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 five to seven of those, and then do the same on all of them. So I'll show you the first one and then uh, and then we'll do the rest. So I've got it all connected. I'm gonna put the parking brake on just for kicks and giggles even though there's no way this engine's starting. And then Molly, you can just record this and I'm gonna crank the engine over and you'll watch this gauge go up. And hopefully it goes up to somewhere around 150 to 160 that would be like fantastic this engine stock from the factory was about 170 so there is some expected loss over nearly 30 years okay so just watch this yep. do i tell you the number 
Yeah, I do. I mean, it's gonna stay there. Or it should. Oh, okay, okay, okay. What we got? One... Something. <laughs> Ooh, that's not pretty good. Oh, did it come down? Did it yeah, drop? it's starting to come down. It was like in the middle between those. Between 120 and 150. There must be a leak in the gauge then. It shouldn't drop like that. The engine wouldn't drop like that. It's either, what was, so, all right, will you just read the max pressure on it and we'll keep that number. It's in the middle of the Did last two. Did it stay two. there this time? Yeah. Oh, it's in the middle of the last two. Yeah, like to the okay, right. Okay, so it's 145. Yeah, that's what I said. Oh, good <laughs> lord. Jeez. It's like 155. 140. What's that 150? That one was only like 125. Really? Is that like really bad? Uh, I have to do the math on it, but that's... It's like 20 below yeah, everything it's else. it's 20 below the average. So this cylinder, this front right cylinder, was quite a bit lower than the rest of them. It wasn't like not working, but in terms of these sorts of tests, it's below where you would want this to be relative to the other cylinders we've tested so far. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna squirt a little bit of oil, this is just regular engine oil, down the spark plug hole and then retest it. And what that'll do is it'll uh, lubricate and sort of help seal the piston rings. And the piston is the thing that actually goes up and down inside the engine cylinder, which is what gives you these readings. And um, if this improves the compression rate then that means that we have worn piston rings, which is not a good thing. But this will tell us that pretty definitively. When you squirt oil in there, typically it'll go up regardless because you are helping it seal, but you wanna see a large jump in compression to tell you that it's like bad. <laughs> so squirt some of this in there and try it out. Top thing, what's that? Was that 135? 135? Yeah, and then it kind of came down to 130, and that's where it was like staying for a second. So I gained 10 psi with adding oil. I'm not sure if that's enough to say definitively that it's bad piston rings, but certainly contributing to the issue. We'll need to do another test called a leak down test to confirm what's actually going on. It's very similar to this test, but. We'll have to get to that later. For now, we'll test the rest of the cylinders on this side. So here's all eight of our cylinders. This entire side of the engine tested pretty good. This tested in line with these, but all three of these cylinders were a bit low. If this was the lowest that they all got, I probably would be okay but 125 is too low compared to, to the rest of these and there's too much inconsistency so there is something wrong with this engine so <laughs> i was not expecting that i'm glad i went and bought the like 30 dollar compression test kit yeah now we're gonna have to go get the leak down test which is like 70 dollars and we'll test that and we'll f be able to find out what exactly is going on with this, but unfortunately, I think pretty much regardless, unless it's a head gasket, this is gonna be like engine rebuild, which is uh, a lot more than I was anticipating biting off for this project. It's such a bummer. Uh, I'm, I don't really know how. How you feel? Yeah, I'm like, pretty pissed, honestly. We bought so much stuff 
to do this, and I feel like an I feel like an idiot now because I probably should have tested all of this before like we bought stuff to do this truck. Now everything we bought can be returned, but that'd be a royal nightmare. But it looks like it needs an engine rebuild, which might be more than I want to do. Even though we're completely restoring this truck, I know I'm get I mean, people are gonna be like, "You're such a hypocrite." I mean, that's just a big undertaking for... Yeah, because I wanted to do it all myself, so that it didn't cost an atrocious amount of money. Yeah, I mean, I think I could do it. It's just going to be... I don't know, let's do the leak down test and okay. then we'll recap. Okay. Okay, so here's our cylinder leakage tester, aka the leak down test. We're going to do the opposite of what we did before. We're going to apply pressure instead of having the engine build pressure if that makes sense we're going to apply pressure to the cylinder and that's going to be through this dial here this is how much is coming in through the air compressor and then this dial over here is going to tell us how much is lost so in a perfect world we'll have the exact same amount of psi over here as we do over here but we know we're probably not going to and the goal of this is to see where the air is coming from so is it coming from the intake which would mean an intake valve is seal is bad or is it coming from the exhaust which could mean an intake I mean an exhaust valve problem is it coming from the oil cap uh, that could mean bad piston rings I think like I'm I'm just sort of <clears throat> I don't really know what I'm talking about here but bear with me I'll read the manual again or what I'm hoping it is is a head gasket leak because that's something I feel pretty confident I can do relatively easily and if it's a head gasket leak then we'll see bubbles or we'll hear air coming from the radiator and all this means is like it's just telling you where the compression loss is going that's all this is doing so we'll get it hooked up there is one other step though with this is that uh, the cylinder that you're testing has to be at top dead center which I'll put a I'll put a diagram right over my face right now. But top dead center just means that the piston is at the top of its compression stroke. And that is kind of hard to explain in layman's terms, but the basically the piston's at the top and both valves are seated and closed. Because if they weren't, then you did this test, it would come out everywhere. So it has to be at the top of its compression stroke and that's hard to explain how to do, so I'm just gonna do it. <laughs> and uh, and you can look up a YouTube video about how to get to top dead center for your specific truck or car. So let's do it. <laughs> okay, so I have this leak down tester here. We're gonna turn it all the way out on your PSI inlet. Attach your hose, then you adjust this See, now it's adding PSI here. I'm gonna go to about 30 PSI. We'll lock that in so it doesn't change. You can see how they're both the same right now. So whenever we connect this to the cylinder, this is gonna drop, and that's gonna give us a percentage of loss, but we already know the percentage of loss is gonna be too much. So now we're looking for where the actual air is coming out of. We're probably gonna hear it, so I'm gonna remove radiator cap. I'm going to open the radiator overflow reservoir here. I've got the air intake open. I'm going to open the engine oil cap and we're going to listen for air to come out. Hopefully it'll be obvious which of these it's coming out of. It could also be coming out of the exhaust. I've got this hooked up to cylinder one. Cylinder one is at top dead center. Now we're just going to, oh my gosh, I'm going to connect this in. See it dropped quite a lot. It's a huge loss. So now I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna add some more pressure here so we can hear. It's about a 50% loss or so. And so I can hear it coming out. Now I just have to figure out where. Sometimes you can just feel it too. Sounds like it's coming out right here. 
somewhere over there for sure. It's coming out of this, son. If I open up this throttle here, you can hear it come out. Oh. Yeah, I get close to this intake. So it is definitely intake related. I didn't hear anything at the exhaust. Nothing noticeable at the engine oil cap, maybe a slight hint, and absolutely nothing in the radiator, which is what I wanted. So that's unfortunate. That tells us we have a leak in that cylinder to the intake. So we'll restart this test. We'll do top dead center of the next cylinder and test again. And we'll see if it's the same issue or maybe it's another issue. So the restart on the next one. That loss is much less. Yep. Intake again. Yep. All three valve issues. So we're going to ignore the fact that the engine has issues right now and we're going to fix two things that really need to be fixed before we move forward. The one is the oil pan is leaking pretty bad. That's a big job and we're going to try to tackle it this afternoon. And then also we have a coolant leak which is just a bad hose that needs to be replaced. And we need to drain the coolant to do the oil pan anyway. It's a good time to do all of it right now. Anyway, but what I was just doing was I was just squeezing. This is the upper, gosh, I don't know what this is. This is the this is the upper radiator hose, but there is something hard inside of this in a couple places, and that is not good. So we're gonna find out what the heck is going on there. There for real, there's like mm. a spring in it. You don't think that's normal? I've never seen that before. The replacement one doesn't have a spring in it. There's actually a uh, little cock valve that uh, it's got a little spot you can put a hose on it. So maybe we won't make a mess at all. Yeah, see that? So you just put a hose on it, turn the little valve open on the left, drain your fluid without uh, spilling it everywhere, hopefully. Also, whenever you're doing this, undo your radiator cap. So it actually allows air in. Oh, there. I don't even need to worry about. Oh, how'd you smell it? I didn't smell it. <laughs> Looked at it. Oh, there. First time you've impressed me, truck. See it? Mm hmm. That is not the color I was expecting. You didn't think it would be green? No, I thought it was going to be clear. <laughs> Pretty sure it's gonna be more than this bottle. Are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Bottles now overflowed. Just barely though. I mean, just the smallest amount. That's just it. Just topped off. <clears throat> That's the smallest spill I've ever done on a changing any fluid on a car. <laughs> I believe that connected there. Wow. Yum. Oh, thank God. Whoever did the oil last didn't make this thing freaking <laughs> super tight. Here's the oil filter, the new one. I'll go ahead and put it back on. I'm just gonna put a little bit of uh, oil around the edge. And I'll even fill it up a bit. 
this helps eliminate the dry start and it helps a uh, better seal the o-ring I'm not gonna get it completely full but it's better than nothing just needs to be hand tight and then like maybe a quarter turn I got my old change one time at a place and they tightened the freaking oil filter down so tight I had to get a wrench to get it off and you should never have to do that wow. so here's the oil pan right here there's so much stuff in the way the engine actually has to be lifted a little bit in order to get the oil pan out so I have to undo the exhaust which I'm just praying that, it, that I don't break the bolts off because they're usually break off so I'm using some rust penetrant spray once I get the exhaust undone then we will unbolt the engine then we will lift the engine a bit place some blocks under the engine to keep it lifted up a bit and then we will attempt to remove the engine pan Wow, that is horrible. Some crusty bolts. My area jacket. Can't have that. So I've lifted up a bit. Now I'm sticking boards in between the mount and the frame. So when we let it back down, it stays lifted. <laughs> oh gosh, this is quite the look. Well guys, it's uh, it's midnight and it's a uh, very brisk outside. I don't know what the temperature actually is, but I would guess it's something around mid 30s because it is frigid outside. But after the longest battle ever with so many issues, I got the oil pan out. I got it cleaned. I got the gasket on. I got the mating surface cleaned and I'm getting ready to put it back in. I had to fully take off the exhaust. Everything the manual told me to do, I did, but I had to fully take off the exhaust. It wouldn't go around the exhaust. Anyway, I'm going to get this all put on and uh, I'm not going to film anymore. I'm just going to give you this one update. I'm sure, I'm sure you can understand why, but uh, yeah, <laughs> here it is. Nice and fresh, cleaned, new gasket, and uh, here's the oil pump, cleaned up a bit, it's got to go in. Feeling like I got a little bit misled when I bought this truck because of some of the things I'm finding now that I'm starting to do some major work on it. Because I get to look at the cylinders when I take this oil pan off. Cylinders look a little burnt, and uh... Also, all this stuff that I'm doing has been done in the past just really badly. So this same exact seal was already in there except for they put like five pounds of freaking silicone 
on it, which is not what you're supposed to do with these. These are, don't need any form of sealant. And uh, anyway, there's just some things that I've noticed that have been done that the guy who sold it to me said hadn't been done. So uh, yeah, we may have um, gotten may have gotten a little misled on this one, but either way, I'm gonna get this in. It's supposed to rain tomorrow, so that's why I'm having to stay up all night and do this. And I'm just gonna get this in and call it call it a day. So uh, see you when I see you. <laughs> That hair is something else. Honestly, I don't care. I don't care about anything right now. <laughs> My body hurts so bad. Well, it's raining, so you can take take the day off. I feel like I need a week off. Well, it's not that. like you did a whole another day last night. So what? <laughs> it's like you did two days in one. Yeah, I didn't get in until I didn't go to sleep till three. My body is messed up. I'm gonna tell you, my body is so messed up from crawling around under that truck. Oh my gosh. I got for real frostbite last night. I got like actual frostbite. I've, I've been on many mountains. I've never had frostbite. I got frostbite in my, in my driveway. That is insane. Yeah, it took 45 minutes in the shower to thaw my feet out. Which is just dumb. That's just dumb. Just dumb. <laughs> Never again. <laughs> oh, goodness. You need to get coffee? Yeah. I guess that fully explains my feelings of how this whole first video went. So, uh, if you will, comment down below what you think we ought to do from this point forward. You know, rebuild the engine, get a new engine. Get rid of the thing. I didn't let you because of your, your afro. <laughs> I don't care. Uh, I don't I don't know what I want to do. Right now I hate the truck. <laughs> I just hate it with a passion. I'll get over that though. The um, I don't even know what I was going to say. Figure out like from a professional's opinion standpoint what needs to happen to it. Because I don't want to just keep doing stuff. Keep pouring money into it and not have someone who knows what they're talking about more than I do, not have an input, if that makes sense. I want to be like told by someone what, what would need to happen. So I have all our ducks in a row, so. Yeah. That was terrible. I cannot explain how bad that was. Alright, we'll see you in the wow. next video. <laughs> okay. <laughs>